Washington DC is a city brimming with beauty, history, and amazing food. We planned a trip to see the cherry blossom trees painting the tidal basin in a sea of white and pink, and then spent the rest of the weekend exploring Georgetown, taking in the Smithsonian museums, and indulging in the city's best restaurants. Come with us as we take the whole family on the perfect weekend trip to Washington DC. We made it to Washington DC, first stop, Tidal Basin. This is the one thing I really wanted to see here. <laughs> you excited about that? You're excited, okay, about, excited it? about it? All right, good, here we go. We got dropped off at the Tidal Basin, the best spot to see cherry blossoms in the city, and started our walk along the water. The Tidal Basin is home to many different memorials, including Martin Luther King, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and Thomas Jefferson. It's also home to Stumpy, one of the most loved trees in the basin, and a testament to nature's resilience as the stump just continues to grow and flower each year. Due to the rising water though, this is the last year that it'll be here, and many people just drove to see it one last time. Buddy, what's that tree's name? Little Stumpy. Little Stumpy. Do you think it's cool or no? Yeah. Since we were with the kids, who were more excited to collect rocks to throw in the water, we just slowly walked along the basin to Thomas Jefferson's memorial. We have this beautiful flowers, but the most important part is just throwing sticks. Okay. Whoa! After throwing all the sticks, the next order of business was to walk the many steps up to the memorial. The entrance was still under construction the same way it had been since I visited two years ago. What's that man That's Thomas Jefferson. The memorial is stunning, and it's probably the most popular behind the Lincoln Memorial. It was built in 1943, but the bronze statue wasn't added until four years later. After exploring the memorial, it was back to walking the tidal basin. Believe it or not, this is actually a week after peak bloom. I planned the trip trying to make it to peak bloom based on the early predictions from the National Park Service. But because of weather, the bloom came a lot earlier than expected, and it was still amazing. If this is something you're trying to do in the future, don't worry about timing peak bloom. It ended up working out really well for us about a week later. I knew this was going to be beautiful, but it is even better than I expected it to be. About an hour in, we stopped for a snack break, and I always forget that when I'm traveling with the family, I need to plan on doing a lot less than I had initially expected. I thought we could make it all the way around the tidal basin, but that's two and a half miles, and we were only about a fifth of the way in, so we decided to just go to my favorite photo spot, and then we are gonna peel off and go to the next thing. Look at Pops getting that epic cherry blossom frame photo. He's doing work right there. And it goes right here. This is my favorite viewpoint where you can get the Thomas Jefferson Memorial and it's framed by the cherry blossoms. Also, if you're interested in more history on this area, Pops did a history video on his channel that I'll link to in the description. In case you want to, you can actually go paddle boating out here. You gotta get here really early and get in line though because it sells out during Cherry Blossom Festival. From here, we left the tidal basin behind and started the 20 minute walk over to the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History and the National Mall. One of the things I didn't think about when I went to Washington DC during the cherry blossoms is that it also coincides with spring break around the United States. Because of this and the fact that most of the museums are free, they were all pretty packed during our trip. This is a great museum with so many cool things to see, but unfortunately when there's a ton of people here and you're with three year olds, it's not very exciting. We made our way quickly through the dinosaur bones and then stopped at the Ocean Terrace Cafe to eat because you can eat in the shadow of a big shark and that was a huge highlight. Before leaving, we did make our way over to the bug area, which is my kid's favorite thing right now, and it was cool that they allowed you to hold a few of the bugs. Leaving the museum behind, we headed over to the Smithsonian Metro Station and then took it to Arlington, which is where our Airbnb was. When we got there, it started raining, and so we grabbed our car and headed out to our next museum. All right, we drove about 45 minutes away. It's still raining, but we are at the museum, and we're gonna see some planes and the space shuttle. You excited, Sunny? All right, good. The Smithsonian Air and Space Museum at the National Mall is what I would normally go to, but it's been under construction, so there's not as much that you can see there currently. Because of that, we decided to head out to its annex, the National Air and Space Museum out by Dulles Airport. This is an amazing museum and it's well worth going to both of them if you can. 
This one especially has two things going for it that the other doesn't though, and the first is an actual space shuttle you can see. I've seen the one in California, but I had never seen this one, so I was excited to see it myself. This is the Space Shuttle Discovery, which is retired but flew many missions to space while it was active. A spaceship? Where does it go? To space. Wow. If you're interested in this kind of thing at all, then definitely spend some time here as there are a lot of exhibits you can see. Don't leave without going in the back of the space shuttle area and seeing the mothership model from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. The next thing you don't want to miss at this museum is to head up to the second floor and go over and see the Enola Gay. This is the first aircraft to ever drop an atomic bomb in war and it was dropped on Hiroshima. The last thing that I recommend you see is the observation tower. After taking an elevator up to the top floor, you have a 360 degree view of the surrounding area. You can see planes taking off and landing from the airport nearby, and you can even hear air traffic control as they're talking to the pilots. I will say that it's a lot further away than I had hoped, so it wasn't as interesting for my children, but it's still a pretty cool spot to see at the museum. That was our last major stop of the day, but after the kids went to bed, there was still time to catch the sunset at Tidal Basin, and even though I knew I'd probably go back a few more times, this was the only time that was predicted to actually have a sunset. I used a ride chair to get dropped off, and then I spent about an hour just walking around and soaking in all of the views. It was a beautiful way to end our first day in Washington, D.C., and I have to say, seeing the Tidal Basin with cherry blossoms blooming at sunset is something I will never forget. All right, we're starting our second day in DC in Georgetown. It's uh, not a nice day. We're gonna make the most of it. Flint and Pops to work right now, pushing the child up the incline. <laughs> How is it the guy with the camera just walks around? Everybody else gotta do the work. What's that about? When Pops starts editing videos, he can, he can be the one shooting. First stop in Georgetown, the life-size Transformer statues. We randomly stumbled on these as we were heading on to our first stop, and they were very cool, especially for the children. Can you fight the blue one? I think they can fight, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. However, whether or not they stay here for your visit is up for debate, as there's constantly litigation about taking them down. Next stop, right next to the Transformers statues, this is the stairs from the end of the Exorcist movie. Those are steep stairs, make sure you hold on to somebody's hand if we're gonna go down them. I won't spoil it in case you've never seen the 1973 movie, but these stairs play an important part at the end. They are very steep and were actually built in 1895. Over the years they become popular and they were actually recognized as a DC landmark in 2015. When that happened, a plaque was installed at the base and they're known as the Exorcist Steps. I'm surprised about how many people are actually exploring the steps on a rainy day with us. Apparently it is a popular attraction. I've actually never seen the movie either, so uh, let me know what you think of it in the comments. Walking. Walking? What are we going to though? The movie. The movie? Okay. <laughs> Four cupcakes. <laughs> if you spend any time researching Georgetown, then you'll no doubt see that they're known for their cupcakes and that there's two places that compete for the title. We headed to Georgetown Cupcakes first, which I was told is the one that's loved the most by tourists. Everyone in our group decided that they needed to try one. What do you think, Jack? Yeah, How many thumbs up? Two thumbs up? Okay, Sunny, what do you think? Two thumbs up? All right. What do you think, Pops? I haven't gotten mine yet. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> My mom got the mocha cheesecake and that is by far the best thing here. It is super sweet so you can't eat very much of it, but man, it is good. Since this wasn't a very nice day to explore more of Georgetown, but I had other things I wanted to see, we actually came back a different day, and so here's that part of the Georgetown experience. Starting with the second cupcake place that is supposedly more loved by locals, which was called Baked and Wired. Saying, do you like the cupcake yesterday or today better? Today. 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 Really good. Is it better? Yeah. 
It's definitely better, I think, than yesterday. Yeah? Yeah. That's Next excellent. level? Really nice, yeah. We definitely loved both cupcake places, but if we had to choose, our family loved Baked and Wired the best. It was nuts that there was no real line here though, and there was about 40 people in line when we drove by Georgetown Cupcakes again. If you've tried both, let us know what you think in the comments. It was also fun that they encouraged you to draw on a napkin and then gave you some stickers so that you could stick it up to the wall. A very interesting art project in the back of the store. One of the things I was most excited about doing the previous day and one of the reasons I came back was to walk the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal. Also known as the CNO Canal, they've created a towpath which goes basically along the entire thing, but which begins in the downtown area of Georgetown and has a lot of interesting history and things that you can see as you walk along. The canals here were constructed in the 1830s and they were used all the way until 1924. It was a huge project that helped transport things along the waterfront, especially coal from some of the nearby mountains. If you have the time and it's a nice day when you're there, I would recommend spending a few hours just walking along the canals, going in some of the shops, grabbing some coffee, and just enjoying this unique part of the city. And this is the oldest house in Washington, D.C. It's not open to explore today, but it's definitely a cool spot in Georgetown. The old stone house was built in 1765, and definitely go see it if you're interested in Washington, D.C.'s history. What's so crazy is to see all the shops built up around Georgetown and then to see that house still sitting there. Leaving Georgetown, we headed over to get lunch at a place that was recommended to me all the way in Southern California. My dad's basically the biggest fried chicken fan I know, so we couldn't not go to Honeymoon Chicken while we were in DC. Jack, what did you do with that sticker on your face? It looks cool. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Honeymoon Chicken was created in 2022, and since then it's been getting rave reviews, even receiving a recommendation from the Michelin Food Guide, which is a high praise for a fried chicken place. Since we had the whole family with us, we ordered a little bit of everything so that we could try as much as possible. So this is hot honey, and you put hot honey on top of anything, including your fingers. Man. Does Amazing. that take it to the next level? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is some next level fried chicken right there. So good. After eating as much fried chicken as humanly possible, we drove 10 minutes over to the National Zoo. Like most places in Washington, D.C., this zoo doesn't charge anything other than parking, which was amazing for my whole family to go for free. It's also one of the oldest zoos in the United States, and it was created in 1889. While it's not on the level of some of the more modern zoos, like the ones you'd see in Southern California, it's still a really great time, especially for younger children. One of the things I really liked here was seeing the historic mosaic arches that were built in 1928. It's cool that they still have some of these preserved inside of the buildings. The last order of business before we left the zoo was to ride the carousel. This is an additional charge, and I think it was around $4 a person, but it was a huge hit for all of the kids. It's really fun. It's a super cool wooden one. To end our time in DC, we're back down at the Tidal Basin, this time for sunset. I don't think we're gonna get a good sunset, but I wanted to see the cherry blossoms one more time before we ended. For this last trip down to the cherry blossoms, I went by myself as I wanted to walk around the entire Tidal Basin, and it was past the kids' bedtime. I didn't get a sunset like I got the previous day, but I had a blast just exploring and walking around for over two hours. So we're about a week after peak bloom and you can see that some of them are already dying, but there's still a good amount that are in bloom. You can also see that most of these are white, but you will see some that are still pink. The difference between the white and the pink blossoms is the type of tree. Almost 70% of the trees in the Tidal Basin have the white blossoms with the hint of pink, but you will see some vibrant pink ones as you're walking around. After passing the Jefferson Memorial, we paid respect to Old Stumpy one more time before continuing on the trail. So as I was exploring the Tidal Basin, I ran into... Ta-da! Chris from Yellow Productions, and he had told me all about this. Chris, what's happening here? Yeah, hey fellow explorers. So what's happening in the Tidal Basin is as the tides are rising and the land here is sinking, the uh, tides come in twice a day on the sidewalk. So the National Park Service 
can't let it just flood forever. So they're gonna actually have to raise the seawall and uh, take out some of the cherry blossoms to do it. So this year is probably the best year for cherry blossoms in a long time. And that's why we had to see Little Stumpy because it's the last year of Little Stumpy. But yeah, check out Chris's channel. I will leave it in the description. Always good to see you, Josh. The water was definitely encroaching along the trail at a lot of different places, so you can see why they're gonna have to move some of these trees. They'll still have a lot of the older, further back trees, but I read that they're gonna be removing about 150 of them. As the sun finished setting and it started to get dark, we made our way to the Martin Luther King Memorial. This was the end of my walk along the Tidal Basin and it's easily one of the most moving memorials in all of Washington, D.C. If you've never seen it, you absolutely have to see it. So with that, my time in Washington, D.C. is done. Hopefully you enjoyed exploring and seeing the unique cherry blossoms with me. See you on the next one. Before ending this video, I want to give a special shout out to the Kite Festival during the Cherry Blossom Festival. I attended this with my sister and her kids and we had a blast just walking around the Washington Monument, seeing thousands of kites flying at the base, and being able to try to fly our own kites while we were there. If you're planning your trip to see the cherry blossoms, it's a great thing to plan it around. This is Kite Day in DC! Alright, that's it for this one. We'll see you on the next one.